Now that's just outrageous. Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and today I have a very exciting video. Today I'm going to be reacting to one star reviews of my favourite books of 2021. I did not come up with this video idea, I watched Murphy's video where she did exactly that and I just thought that was such a fun concept because you not only get to see, you know, maybe some valid criticism, but also you get to talk about your favourite books again and I had so many good ones in 2021, I was just like dying to do it. I'm gonna go on Goodreads, put in the book title, scroll down to the comments, filter with the one star ones and we'll see. Maybe they have something valid to say, you know? Sometimes, like most of the time, I can be like, yes, this book is imperfect. Yes, I agree with you. However, I just, I love it. So we're gonna go do that. I, for now, we're gonna react to my fa five favorite books of 2021, because I don't know how long that'll take. If we need more, I have a top 10 list, so we're sorted. If you actually do wanna watch that video where I talk about my favorite books, why I love them, all of that, check out that video. But without further ado, let's do this. Let me scooch over so you can, you can paste the comment here. I'm not gonna be mean. I'm not gonna, you know, put anyone's name. And this is all in good fun. Let's just remember this is all in good fun. We don't need to get personal. So, you know, let's start from fifth place up. So my fifth favorite book of 2021 was Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. Book about a world where people have earth powers and it's interesting storytelling and I loved it. I gave it five stars and obviously I think it's the best book ever, but let's see what one five one star people had to say. I want to like make sure you can see. No. Uh, mm, there you go. Sorted. <laughs> okay, this was funny because <laughs> it's like I'm told N.K. Jemison was yet another probably deserved Hugo Award this year, so that's nice of them. Uh, her third in a row. As some of yas are probably well aware, I'm not fond of her writing style nor of her bullshit crossed out books. What can I do? I just don't like her stuff anywhere. Where was I? Oh yeah. When I tried to read the first installment of The Broken Earth, I just failed to finish it and ended up throwing the bastard on the barbie along with the, some shrimps and prawns. What? Ruining both the shrimps and the prawns. Also, a few days ago, I was amiably discussing the novel in question with some peeps in a let's call it forum on the interwebs. But as soon as I pointed out that my personal feelings when it, when it comes to the series of books and offer well, let's say it's my view weren't met with enthusiasm by the admin and I got an Instaban. I swear I didn't call anyone funny names and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I'm not aggressive. <laughs> I know I should be talking about the fifth season, but I'll tell you what. Tell you what? No! <laughs> the fifth season subs they fell! <laughs> what the fuck is this review? Wow. Wow. Okay, this person, I, although hilarious, told me absolutely no actual reason why they disliked it. So, you know, let's move on. Okay, wow. Why is it that when I pick up a book by a newer author, I. Is Nancy Gems is a new author? invariably feel like I have to do ed editor's work for them. Right on the first page, we already have a malapropism. Naruto tells us a character is an old hat at this, and she's an old hand. Old hat also refers to a different kind of thing. Okay, I'm sorry, but this, I can't read this. this I'm not I'm not smart enough to read this this review. What a waste of time. I'm very disappointed in this book. No characters, no plot, not even pages. What? There's no pages? There's pages. My copy has pages. It turns out it doesn't actually exist at this point and not for another year, so trying to read it now is fruitless. How are these other people reading it for or more? Oh, oh, it's a troll. <laughs> it's a troll. <laughs> Never mind. What a, what a dick it is. Like, this book's not come out yet, so let me <laughs> give it one star to support it. Like, what the fuck? Okay, someone said, I know I'm in the minority here. I just couldn't get past the style of second person and present tense. I found it so distracted by the style that I wasn't paying attention to what was happening. And then I realized I had no idea what was going on. I think that's fair. I think most people's um, problem of the fifth season is the fact that it's 
it's hard to understand what's happening. Telling you why would be a spoiler, I guess. I mean, I figured it out as I was reading and then that made sense in my head, but it is a bit confusing. It's like one of the perspectives is a second per person perspective, but the rest aren't. So two of them aren't. Um, so I don't know, I think it's worth it and it kind of adds a fun little mystery, but I totally understand that it, would, it was confusing, if especially if you didn't catch on. Yeah, another person said, the writing style isn't my kind of the thing. The whole plot has very went over my head. I have no idea what's going on and I'm bored out of my goddamn mind. The other person didn't have, this person's on 284 page from 4049. And sadly, this is the kind of book you gotta finish for it to make sense, so... Ooh, okay. This book was a huge disappointment for me, especially after reading so many glowing reviews. The story is supposed to be building up to a grand plot twist, which is finally revealed on the last page, but the plot twist itself is obvious from very early in in the novel. The way the ending is written, it feels like the author is asking us to marvel at the ingenu ingenuity with the great surprise. However, it wasn't a surprise at all since the clues were everywhere. This book is a letdown on so many levels. Unrelatable characters, slow repetitive plot, clunky writing style, inconsistent pacing, poorly developed magic system, narrow world building. Mm. Okay, so I also guessed the plot was pretty, like, really early on. But it didn't bother me. I thought it was fun. I, I still enjoyed, like, the ride. And yeah, okay, well, it, it wasn't like the hardest, but wow, a month's review. Do I dare? Do I dare? Okay, at least it's very long and detailed, let's learn. Just terrible. The writer does not understand money, electricity, physics, or bureau bureaucracies. This book has no ending, no climax, which means it's not a story. A story has a beginning, middle, and end. Okay, you're right, let's not be innovative at all. The beginning of the book, maybe the first six, is essentially words demanding an aspirin. <laughs> okay, okay, we've we've spent too much time. We spent ten minutes on this book. This book, this video will be so long if we do this. So we need to move on. My fourth favorite book of twenty twenty one was Who She. She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. So this is a gender band retelling of Rise to Power of the First Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, and we follow a girl who steals her brother's destiny and becomes a boy, a monk. It's all fun and games and I loved it. So <laughs> let's see what people had to say. So this person said this is was boring and the main character Ju is supposed to be Mulan. But it's not a Mulan retelling. It's just that she wears man's clothes, but it's not a Mulan retelling. I thought a book trumpeted as Mulan with a son of Achilles spin would be intriguing to read, but it really does not work. I've never heard it pitched like that, but yeah. Ahoy there, me mates! <laughs> this book lured me in with its promise of a story of a girl who takes the place of her dead brother who has been destined for greatness. It is set during a time from leading to the founding of the Ming Dynasty in China. This person also DNF'd at 32%. I feel, mm, I feel like if you DNF at 32%, you can't say shit. Or like 25, bro, you barely got in the book. I'm sorry, I feel bad, I'm sorry. Maybe if it's like terrible and offensive, then you can, but. Okay, so this person said, to be fair, I love the setup at the beginning of the novel. I enjoyed how the main character, Zhu, is so determined to live that she rejects her fate and steals the path of her brother. However, there are huge jumps in time where we miss Zhu's personal development and it leads to a series of vignettes without the connective tissue. I wanted the mystic sections and frankly, found the given plot to be rather boring. The Pace was the pace was uneven. Oh no, okay, so this person just stopped liking it at 30%, 2%, but ended up finishing it. Okay, that's a little bit fair. This book does have a lot of time jumping, and because of that, we kind of barely get to know the main character. We just see her through like vignettes, like like the person said in her life. Um, and that I agree. I actually find out this is a du duology. I think it could have been a trilogy and just like meet out a little bit of those parts when she was younger and stuff. And like, uh, I know Hannon also had the same complaint that the, the time jumps were too much. So I, I see that. I can, I can see that. I'm going to be in the minority. I don't doubt. I just couldn't get into it. The pacing dragged and many plot points were predictable. Plus, as another Goodreads reviewer notes, while I love multiple POVs, in She Who Became the Sun, the changes in POV was jarring and confusing. I don't remember thinking that, but that could be fair. 
Ooh, okay. I don't know if people forgot the difference between morally grey versus outright evil and what happened to actual underdogs, not just bitter bitches. <laughs> and someone else is bitter, but okay. I think three dimensionally dimensionality is lacking with our main character mostly because they are literally nameless until the very end. Yeah, but that's like, okay. The feeling throughout the entire book was hollow. I didn't was not feeling this bitch at all. They were utterly pathetic. You have no desire in this life at all except greatness, not within yourself but within your brother. Small little mishaps and mistakes they would blame themselves because they believed he wasn't actually the one born with luck. What? When he found that war he becomes evil. In the end they were just insecure like also, way you so woman, sorry to say, was giving misogynistic. That was definitely hard to read. Okay, I don't know. Okay, so yes, the main character remains nameless, but I do feel like it's part of the point, no? It's not exa exactly accurate because in the beginning, the main character's motivation wasn't to seize the greatness, but rather to uh, just live. Oh God. I was so hyped about this book and now I have some kind of PTSD from the disappointment. Perhaps the subject matter bolstered people's scores. A bit of virtue signaling, perhaps. I lacked... It lacked so much depth. At times, some of the plot bordered on ridiculous. Honestly, I can't express how disappointed I am. Okay. Fair enough. Let's move on. Okay. So, my third favorite book. And since I made this list, I actually think this might have, like gone up there. But anyway, it's um, Six Crimson and Cranes by Elizabeth Flynn. It's a retelling of Six Swans, I think. We follow a girl who is the daughter of an emperor and she gets exiled and her brothers turn to cranes and she can't speak because then her brothers will die. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous girls. We love them. <laughs> the next time I pick up a YA novel, no matter how good the blurb sounds or how beautiful the cover, someone shoot me and put me out of my misery. Why do I keep doing this to myself and picking up such horribly shitty books? How did these books keep it? What? It skirts on the Bechdel test, but not by much, besides the relationship with him. Okay, she's cursed so that she can't talk. None, and I mean none of the female characters get along, are sympathetic to each other, help each other, are kind to each other, and supportive of each other. The brothers who are cranes are barely fleshed out and aren't very distinctive. I mean, yeah, because... Oh. <laughs> the smartest character in the book is Paper Crane. And the plot besides the bare bones picked from the fairy tales about the princess turning into birds and their sisters having saving them wasn't very well done. The world building is minimal, the author at first tries to set up a love triangle, never falls through on a leaving bit of plot hole. Mmm, no, it, mm. This is supposed to be a YA novel, but it's really a middle grade novel? Okay, it says, it, this person says that it says audiences ages 12 up. I have bad news for you, sir, but, um, or, or lady, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure YA is from 12. This is why we need new adult, but anyway. The pacing is terrible, everything goes at warp, so I disagree. It's like this person doesn't understand what character growth means. I'm sorry, I'm getting really annoyed. But this is like, oh my god, this is an actual essay, I'm not reading it. But like, that's the point. Like, their complaint is that she's immature in the, in the book. The whole point is her character development because she develops as a person and grows and matures. Excuse me. This new person. The writing is elementary and I struggle to see the appeal in the simple style. Are you on drugs? The characters felt simply bland and two-dimensional. Huh? I dislike the protagonist Sherry from the beginning. That's the whole point. Sorry, I'm getting really annoyed. I love this book so... <laughs> what I ever say about this book is the writing style. The writing style is gorgeous, like absolutely beautiful. I felt like I was reading poetry, like what the hell? And the, the development of the main character, again, the whole entire freaking point. I'm, mm, I'm sorry, I should not be... No, I thought this would be fun. It's not fun. No, I disagree. I wanna... <laughs> Oh, okay, this person, I know me and this person are not gonna get along because they said, it's my fault, I broke my number one rule. I promised myself that I would never automatically buy an author's next work, no matter how fantastic their debut was. And I really didn't like the debut. I thought it was so poorly paced. I thought it was poorly paced. I didn't like any of the characters. 
<laughs> I like the writing style that, that didn't change. I really didn't like Spin the Dawn. This one's so much better. Oh my god. We are so different and that's what makes it fun. What? Well, first and foremost, this read like a middle grade novel. I disagree. Yeah, she acted and spoke so childishly. Yeah, because she's a spoiled princess. That's literally what she is. I mean, poorly written. Poorly written. I don't, I don't have time for these people. Let's move on. Let's talk about my second favorite book of 2021, Sword of Kai Gen, uh, by Ellen Wong. This is, uh, this is a martial arts novel and we follow a mother and sons and father as they try to grow up and become a family. All right, let's find out how people are gonna hurt my feelings now. It was so draggy. I normally adore slow-paced fantasy, but this one just didn't seem to work for me. It was really slow. There were too many info dumps that felt forced in. Holy exposition, Batman, honestly. I don't remember that, but maybe. I don't think this book was able to achieve a good balance between plot and interpersonal relationships. It completely and totally sacrificed the former for the latter. I agree, but I liked it. <laughs> like there was very, very minimum, minimum plot, but I actually feel, felt like there was enough to have another book because there was like brewing of something on the horizon and then we just kind of ended. But I just think the interpersonal relationships were worth it, personally. I could not get behind Misaki as a character. I couldn't connect to her motivation priorities. I don't know, I feel like she was pretty, like, um, I could I could understand where she was coming from because she is a mother, but she used to be a warrior. She had to give up all of that to enter into an arranged marriage. And now she's a mother, feels really disconnected from her children, from her culture, from her husband, and feels very lonely. And I get that. Oh, this person complaining about italics. Being honest, the same around. The book sucks. Genuinely one of the worst fantasies I've read. Three reasons why. Extremely bad at handling exposition. The writing was so unsubtle. Goes like TV is showing propaganda. Character says this is propaganda. <laughs> okay, I guess. Okay, the info dumping was just too much for me. There was literally a history lesson. There was literally another point where a character A rambled on about a piece of history for five pages and then stopped and another character B asked her to continue. It's like the author is not only info dumping but also creating excuses within the story. Okay, I think it's time to move on. Let's go to my favorite book of the year. <laughs> I'm so scared. It's Strange a Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. In this one we follow Laszlo who uh, discovers the magical world of wheat and it's beautiful. My favorite thing is beautifully written. I love the characters. I love the pacing because it was slow but beautiful. It was just so beautiful. I, mm, I'm scared, okay. It just wasn't my cup of tea. That's fair, that's really fair. Please note that I didn't have this book at 5%, but you know you don't have to rate it, right? Like, I don't understand why people give it a one star when they... 5%? Like, what was that? Like, two pages? Uh, oh my god. The YA fantasy, Strange the Dreamer, is one of the most morally repugnant books I've ever read. The novel relies on racism, classism, and ableism as central features of the plot, and these mindsets are held by, held by the so-called heroes. The story is a traditional white savior tale in which the white master race, slave-owning colonials, are recast as blue-skinned demigods with magical powers. No one in this book is having a good time, least of all the readers. It seems this book taught a lot of people the power of the nothing. People thinking of reading this book should be warned of two things. This book is a romantic tragedy. Well, yes, it is, it is. The last two thirds of the book evoked only one emotion for me, dread. I think the book is grossly mismarketed. The cheerful blue and... Really? I never got an enterprise. I knew this would be heartbreaking. I never... Is it cheery? I, I want to say it's super cheery, is it? Uh, anyway, there's no resolution at the end. It's a duology. The last sentence is because the story was not over yet. The series as a whole may end up enjoyable, but the end of this book was walks off a cliff. Mm. If it weren't for those two things, I might be giving the book five stars. I don't understand. Like it is a romantic tragedy. It was supposed to be. I don't. Okay. This was easily one of the most boring books I have read this year. I was trying to decide whether I should give it one or two stars, but no, it's a one star for me. Sorry, I tried though. Oh, they didn't like a single thing. Oh, this person said they were looking forward to it because they liked 
smoke and bone series it's very different it's very different i wouldn't if you like one you're not gonna necessarily like the other i love both both five stars but it's very different <laughs> i did it i'm done i've never been so relieved to finish a book in my life never again <laughs> let's finish here shall we before i lose my mind <laughs> Okay, this was really fun. I actually did have a lot of fun. Like, I didn't want to stop reading them. I feel like this video is going to be really long. But yeah, let me know. Did you have fun? Again, this is just all in good fun. Like, I'm not saying anyone's stupid for having this opinion. Like, I'm sure I have some really stupid opinions. Wait, now that's me calling them stupid. I'm sure I have some opinions that not everyone agrees with. So I'm cool with you not agreeing with my faves. I love them, but that's completely fine if you didn't. Let me know. Did you enjoy this video? If yes, I'd be... Lo oh, I'd love to do part two. I react to my to one star reviews of my favorite books like from five to ten. Oh my god In my dreams I hold a knife is there and I feel like that's gonna get roasted But I loved it. Thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it If you could comment like and subscribe, I really really appreciate it, it really helps me out But that's it from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye